Hello friends, I'm David Vos. It's a wonderful morning back in New Mexico. We're heading back to Texas on our trip and um, just sitting here drinking some coffee and it's really really nice and pleasant out so it's not too hot. A little breeze. So I thought I'd make a little video. Um, I was thinking about some of the comments that I get and um, I thought well maybe I should kind of address that comment, that type of comment that I get. Because I'm always getting somebody who probably has just started watching the videos or just watched that one video. And they notice that I'm saying stuff like, Jehovah is the devil. And we're not under any laws. And, and they're thinking, okay, now this is crazy because this isn't what I've heard. You know, I'm a Christian, and this guy's not a Christian. But it's so ironic to me. It is so ironic to think that what I'm teaching is the way Christianity taught. It's the way all Christians believed. It seems very strange to me that for four or five, six hundred thousand years, True Christians were teaching just like I'm teaching about astrology and esoteric wisdom, how the Old Testament God, this sort of an anthropomorphic bearded man in the sky with wrathfulness and trying to murder everybody, they understood that was a parable about the dark forces and the dark gods that rule the, the, the bottom side of the astrological wheel. And this was taught today we, we, we think of these people as Gnostics instead of Christians, which is strange because they didn't think of themselves as Gnostics. They didn't have the word Gnostic written above their, their door. Actually, they were communities. Christianity has always been communities. Um, Jesus was a Nazarene, which the book of Acts says is a sect. And after he died, Paul was the ringleader of the Nazarenes. And James was the leader of the Ebionites, which is a, a community of those who believed in Christ in Jerusalem. And of course, you've all heard of the Essenes. And these early, you know, followers of John the Baptist and then the Lord Jesus, and then James and John and, and Paul and Peter and the rest of the apostles, these early Christians, they were first called Christian in Antioch, long after Christ died, but the followers of Jesus, those, the knowers, the Gnostics, those who taught the wisdom, the Ebionites, the poor, that's what the word Ebionite means, they taught an esoteric teaching, a spiritual teaching. It's really the same teaching that the apostles taught. It's in all of the epistles. Apostle Paul taught the Christ within us. He taught about being born again, about receiving wisdom that doesn't come from human sources. The, the, our Lord Jesus told us that we could get the Holy Spirit and it would teach us all things, that we wouldn't need a man to teach us. But early Christians throughout the whole world, they were known as many different things by Catholics. When the Catholics came along in 325 and started murdering them, calling them cursed, making up stories about them, saying they were witches. And there never was such a thing. Um, the word witch is just a modern translation of words. Words that in the early Greek may have meant someone who divined. Do you know what divination means? It means you divine an answer from the divine. It means you get an answer from the divine, from God. Now, what, what could be wrong with getting an answer? See, today, Christianity has gotten so estranged and so far away from the truth that they no longer even believe in actually getting answers from the spiritual, from the divine. But they're, they're getting on their hands and knees and begging an anthropomorphic God, tears running down their face, believing in some sort of a bearded man that's going to give them favors. 
as long as they do penance or something, you know, um, put the wafer in and dunk three times or do, you know, these rituals and ceremonies and so forth. This is what the Bible actually rails against, especially the New Testament. This is idolatry. This is what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1. They've exchanged the glory of the incorruptible, immortal God, the invisible whose spiritual qualities are seen in creation. And they've changed that for the glory of the incorruptible man and forfeited beasts. They believe in God as a man. And this is what Christianity does. They believe in the Father and the Son. And these are two men with beards, you see. But the Apostle Paul says that we don't know Jesus as a man anymore. But he is spirit. The Apostle Paul says that Christ is a spiritual body that we're all a part of. We're all joint heirs. And that Christ spirit is within you. You have Adam and you have, you have Christ. The flesh is Adam and, and, and the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's passing away. And this is a different world and this is a different God, the God of this world, who created this world. The carnal. If you look in... Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, you'll see two different accounts of creation. The first account is the spiritual account, and it was created by the gods. And there were various gods that took part in creation, and it was all directed by our Father in heaven. And it was a spiritual creation, and there were no trees that were prohibited. There was no concept of sin or error, because we were all children of our Father in heaven. It was in the second chapter that Jehovah comes along. And he creates, he doesn't use the word create, it says he yasar, which means he brought into form, to physical form. And he separated the man from the woman. Because you see, in our Bible, it's translated in such a way that it leads one to believe that Adam is man, the male. And women aren't even people. They were just some sort of afterthought that came out of this rib and that's not at all what the Bible teaches. It says he made Adim, male and female, made he them. In his own image. Because you see, our Father in heaven has a wife. I know it seems very strange, but the Apostle Paul says our mother is in heaven. The Bible doesn't talk a lot about the mother. Because you see, the mother comes from the word matter. And that is the physical universe. And this is why Christ came to redeem the physical world. Because it has fallen into this form, this creation, manipulated by this God of this world. The archons are the 12 gods who fell. They are the gods of the astrological wheel. And on the bottom side of that wheel, it goes into this dark night. And the gods that rule down there, the Saturn, um, Saturn rules over... Um, Aquarius and Pisces, which is, we're about to go in, we're in Pisces now, we're about to go into Aquarius. And so we're being ruled in this world over the god Saturnalius, which is where we get the word Satan. He's the god with two horns and a fish body, and, a, and a, the upper part of a goat and two horns. And so this is where, in all the religions, you get this god with the two horns that we call the devil. And in fact, the Old Testament God, Yahweh, as we've, I've made other videos about this, he's also, even in the Bible, called Inki. And in ancient times, he was Inki Ia. And in the Jewish writings, he's called Enoki In Ea. Ya. You know, he, he created the Sabbath and, and he made these laws and wrote them in our heart. This represents the DNA, manipulated our DNA. And he wrote this tablet and he put it upon, upon this ark in this holy temple. Our bodies are the holy temple. And so our bodies have something that's inside them that's defiled the body. And this is why Christ had to go into that temple and cleanse it. And Christ woke up inside the body and threw out this beast that they were worshiping inside the most holy. The beast or the carnal or the carnivorous fleshly will, the ego. The one who says, I am, and there is no one else. And you will worship me because I am God. 
and I'll kill everybody and anybody who bows down to another because I am the only God. I am a God and my name is Jealous. That is my name. And he came down upon that mountain in thick gloom and darkness and Moses was sore afraid. But that is not our Father in heaven. But it was a deception, a slander. Yeah, the law slanders you. It accuses you day and night before our Father in heaven. But our Father does not accuse you. He loves you. And he came, he sent forth his Son to give you life, and that more abundantly. And this is the teaching of the New Testament. The God of this world is seeking to devour someone. He runs around like a roaring lion. Lion, You've got to recognize the difference between the flesh and the spirit, between this world and, and, and the world that we live in, because we're no part of this world. And his kingdom is no part of this world. And so we've got to understand and rightly divide the word. And it's strange to me that Christianity has come this far, where we have completely forgotten our own God, our own divine being. Because our divine, our Father in heaven is spiritual. He's light. And he dwells in unapproachable light. That means that, you know, conscious light Understanding, wisdom, knowledge, consciousness, being. That's where our Father in heaven is, is absolute, amazing, brilliant consciousness. Not this flesh. He is spirit. He is love. And there is no darkness in him at all. There's no wrath. There's no anger. There's no hate. He only loves us. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should attain. And he gives us plenty of time for a day under the Lord is like a thousand years. This is the aeons. Each of these days are a thousand years. And there's 24 days in, just like there are 24 hours in a day. And uh, that dark God rules in the night. But you see, the ancient wisdom shows that that the sun is born on the horizon. They used to call it Horus because it was born on the horizon. And it was born from a virgin woman and the sun would rise in the sky and overcome Satan in the darkness of this, of this night that we've lived through. And so Christ died on the spring equinox and was resurrected. And it's a beautiful thing. But um, this was the early Christian faith. And then Constantine, the Roman emperor, came along and decided that he was going to change Christianity. And he began to persecute the true Christians. And everybody had to believe in the same thing. And they burned all the ancient wisdom. The Alexandrian library was burned in 325 AD. All the ancient wisdom. 1945, we dug up some documents called the Nagamati Library. We found out that there were some ancient writings uh, by the apostles that we hadn't even got to read yet. And if you read those, you'll see that, that ancient wisdom and how it's taught that they believed in reincarnation. See, we've got time. We're going through the wheel of life. And we're growing and progressing. And now we understand why the Bible says that we're to be transformed from glory to glory, even as is done by the Lord. And it talks about these glories in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40, and on down through there. It talks about how we go from one glory into another. And uh, you know, from the fish, to the birds, the mammals, to human. And then when we go to the immortal resurrection, we could be as the moon, or as the sun, or as the stars. And each star differs from star and glory. Because we're going to go from glory to glory forever. Eternal progression towards the unimaginable, unbelievable, amazing light. That unapproachable light that we continue to approach but never reach the end because it's eternal. We're an infinite being. We've lived from all infinity and we're going to live to all infinity. And all of this darkness created by this God is just an illusion because he's not really a creator and he has no life within him. But it's just darkness. And darkness is just an illusion. And the, and the life that we're living here 
is the illusion of fear, pain, suffering. The only reason we feel these things and see these things is because we have not yet progressed in faith to believe in our Father in Heaven. But we're still looking at all the dazzling colors, our fears and our own thoughts and our own imaginations. This is the world that we have imagined. We are the ego. In fear and in lust and in our carnal nature, we create the world around us. See, that's why the Bible says, they asked Jesus, you know, why don't you just take out the weeds right now? But he said, no, you have to let it grow up into the harvest. And then you'll see clearly which is the weeds and which is the wheat. And see, he's not talking about weeds being bad people. He's talking about the, the bad qualities that we purge as we go and we progress. Just like the parable in the Bible that talks about how we're, we're like silver being burned in the fire so that we can burn off all this dross. Because that precious part is the silver and the gold that's in the middle. That's your soul. It's very precious to the Lord. And all people are precious and are all going to be saved in Christ, which was his eternal purpose from the very beginning. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go, friends. I hope that you all have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again tomorrow. It's David Vos. Have a good one.